Kate Benedict is Vice President of Sales U.S. Pharmaceuticals for Alcon. She's an experienced professional with over 15 years of, of progressive career experience in the healthcare field, not all of them in ophthalmology. She joined in 2013 at Alcon as VP of Sales in the eye care business, but soon after, words her competence and confidence and courage gave her a, a additional responsibility, and she had responsibility for the specialty eye and ear, inside sales and U.S. performance development teams, and now she is accountable for delivering two billion in revenue through a team of some 700 people. <laughs> so prior to joining Alcon, Kate worked for J&J, where she was a sales rep, began as a sales rep for Ethicon. She remained at J&J for 17 years, and I'm sure she learned some of that confidence, competence, and courage there in global marketing and strategic product, new development, and finance. She's lived both in the U.S. and in Asia. She's successfully combined her formal education in business, marketing, and accounting to achieve her, pro her pro professional accomplishments. She lives in Mansfield, Texas with her husband, Russ, their eight-year-old son, Cooper. As a mother, wife of a successful professional, her husband, and VP at Alcon, Kate is well positioned to speak to us about competence, confidence, and courage. We appreciate her tonight, but she's also an OWL board member, a very nice addition to our ever-developing and wonderful board of directors. Kate. Thank you. It's amazing to kind of hear someone talk about you. It sounds much more impressive than what I think about myself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I first want to say just thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I, it's such an honor to be part of this amazing panel of fabulous women and your stories. So um, hopefully you, you find some value in my experiences as well. Um, you know, for me, as I think about my success, it's always really surprised me because I grew up in a little tiny town in southern Delaware. Um, for those of you on the East Coast, it's kind of the slower lower, which is what they'll talk about in Delaware. <laughs> All right, nice. <laughs> I thought that was. And, um, you know, I, I joke, but, you know, my town growing up was 5,000 people, and I was excited that we had three traffic lights. <laughs> we have five now. <laughs> Um, but, you know, what that taught me, or really, I guess, didn't bias me, is I, I, never, I didn't really think that much about, you know, what I was limited to. And, uh, you know, my parents, you know, they were, you know, small town people, and they always just challenged me to, to do whatever I wanted to do. And so growing up, um, I never really thought about gender. I never thought about, you know, race. I just you know, did whatever I wanted to do and, you know, whether it was as a little kid playing on the boys' baseball team, because there was no girls' baseball team, um, or whether it was, um, you know, when I wanted to, uh, to play music and, you know, most of my, my, my girlfriends were picking the flute and the clarinet and I picked the trombone. <laughs> um, but I got to tell you, I mean, those experiences for me really changed my life. So, you know, music is something I had a passion about. And um, it's something that even uh, eventually brought me to uh, have a scholarship to go to college to play instrumentally. And, um, you know, I thought initially, like, what is it that gives me confidence when I have to speak in front of large groups of people, which I often do? And I really, it goes back to being in, you know, fifth grade band when, you know, you're starting to learn to play and someone first asked me, well, why don't you want to, do you want to play the solo? And so from, you know, age 10 all the way up and through college, I got used to standing up in front of groups and, you know, playing my musical instrument, whether it be in the, the band or, whether, or the, you know, the, uh, the marching band or a jazz band, uh, and then eventually in college for a short time. So that really, in my mind, um, is about, it can give you confidence. So I think it's really, don't worry about it, getting confidence in just your career. Look in any aspect of your life, and, and you can learn it and develop confidence in what you can do and really whatever is, uh, is offered to you. You know, when I went to college uh, in my hometown, only about 10% of the people in my hometown went to college. Um, so I was really honored that I actually got to go. And uh, at the time, I went to the University of Delaware, which is a big town for me because it was four times the size of my hometown. <laughs> um, and I started out in chemical engineering. And I was proud because at the time, that was the second best school in the country to get into. And um, after about probably six weeks, I thought, oh my God, what have I done? Um, because I very quickly realized, and I love the comment about finding your passion, um, because I very quickly realized that I am not an engineer to be. And um, so the first time I really had to show my courage was when I had to call my father and I said, Dad, 
um, engineering is not for me, and if I drop this class, I'm, I'm automatically a year behind. And he said, okay, you're an adult, make a decision. And I did, and I dropped the class, and so I had to then figure out what do I want to do? And, and honestly, I didn't know at this point what I wanted to do. So, you know, serendipitously, I was talking to a friend and she asked me, why don't you try to take a business class? And so I did, and long story short, um, business came very easy to me, and uh, accounting was what I found to be very, very easy for me. So I ended up graduating in accounting, and I spent the first 10 years of my career doing uh, public accounting and, and, and uh, corporate finance for various companies. And then I got my MBA, and I realized that something was missing, and that I felt like I wanted to make more of a difference. And accounting was this amazing background, but I wanted to get close to the customer. So the second time I would say that I really had to show courage was when I completely changed careers. And I went from being a very successful you know, senior manager in finance to starting a new career as being a sales rep when I had never sold anything in my life. And uh, it was scary, and I can tell you, I didn't do well at it initially. Um, but you know, you have to just keep your head down and, and focus, and, and I knew that if I worked hard, I would eventually be successful, and it, and it, did, it did pay off for me. And you know, eventually, I was, I was brought inside, and I got to do amazing things, working everything from you know, global product development, where you know, eventually I was our, our franchise head, and I was able to bring new products to market that uh, today I'm still very proud of, because they're used in surgeries that probably some of your family members um, have, have been part of. So you know, that was a really amazing thing to me. You know, this, the, the message I, I guess I would want to leave you with, and, and someone alluded to it earlier, um, there's a quote that I heard from Richard Branson re recently, and it's, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity, and you're not sure if you can do it, just say yes. <laughs> Figure it out later. Yeah. And I can tell you, um, so you know, a couple of times that's happened for me. I mean, I was asked when I was working for J&J, &J, you know, Kate, will you go lead a sales organization in Australia? And I thought, good God. I mean, okay, I've been a rep for three years, I've been a manager for a long time, but I don't know if I can do that. And I had just read the Lean In book by Sheryl Sandberg, and my husband said to me, for God's sakes, you just read that book and told me about it all weekend long, live into it. <laughs> so, you know, I said, yes, I'm going to do it. And again, you know, you figure out a way, and again, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't all successes uh, initially, but eventually we came through it. Um, and I would say, you know, the final time that, that that really has hit me is with my decision to lead Johnson & Johnson, an amazing company that I loved. Um, for seven, I was there for 17 years uh, to come to Alcon. And I had spent 17 years in medical devices. I didn't know really anything about pharmaceuticals. I knew nothing about ophthalmology. And I was, you know, moving my family, you know, to Texas. And so I said, well, you know what, I'm just going to try it. And, uh, you know, I've never looked back, and it's been a, it's been a phenomenal experience. You know, and now as I think about my leadership, because I'm lucky that I get a chance to talk to large groups of people. And uh, I have an amazing mentor of mine. She's actually the president of uh, McNeil Consumer, uh, the Tylenol company. And um, you know, she has a quote, um, and, and it's, it, it's essentially, um, success is not a result of spontaneous combustion. You have to set yourself on fire. <laughs> Want to go in? And that's the, uh, the guidance that I would give to everyone in the room. You know, there's no one pathway. I mean, I never, you know, 25 years ago, never would I have thought that I have the job that I have now. Never would I have thought that I've been able to live and travel to, you know, many amazing cities around the world. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you're the person that limits what you can do. And so I would just, you know, really challenge everybody, you know, be confident. You know, build your competence, you know, be, be willing to take on any job that's going to give you a new skill, a new experience, or a new capability. And at the end of the day, you'll be successful. And for me, success is about making a difference. And that's why I absolutely love working in the healthcare field. And I love leading large groups and large teams because I feel like I can make a difference in people. So thank you.